the word of god is alive and powerful sharper than any two edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow and it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart all scripture is god breathed and it's profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth, or accurately handling the word of truth. Before we could continue today's discourse, the grace of our Lord being renewed one more day to enjoy the reality to become a superhero, to become an invisible hero and win a believer in the sight of God by using super grace and then running out into ultra super grace is of a very great importance that many of the men in today's Christendom have forgot to really enjoy by putting an end to sin and to love righteousness in Christ. The necessity of the condition which it has been explained on John 3, it is a must that you have to be born of the Spirit. Nicodemus being the teacher of the law would have noted it very easily to know. But our Lord could see the blank expression in his face that he couldn't understand the teachings of our Lord. The must realizes there it is a necessity of a condition that each and every believer after believing in Christ should live a life that is pleasing unto Jehovah. And to live a life that is pleasing unto Jehovah it is not possible by any means apart from the supernatural means of execution which is nothing but to get the Holy Spirit permanently indwelling in us. If it is not by the pure mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, that we can attain the things pertaining to Jehovah, then there is no other way that you can pertain and you can attain to those things. Therefore, whenever we are approaching that great Lord, who alone indwells in that light which no man has seen, it requires for us to go through that same light. That same light who has made an abode in you through the Trinity. Walking in light with the Lord is a true fellowship with Jehovah all the time. And light represents the knowledge of Bible doctrine under the fortizo ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Therefore, before we could begin our discourse or we could learn something pertaining to our Lord and we could change our lives from sin to love righteousness, we need to make sure that we have been controlled of the Spirit or filled of the Spirit by using the privacy of our priesthood through 1 John 1 9 and get back into fellowship so that the Word became flesh and dwelt in us. The Word which became flesh got resurrected and left behind the written Word, what is the completed canon. And the simple truth, what we need to know is, Word becoming flesh and the flesh emphasizing for you to know the Word demands that you have to give number one priority for the filling ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, so that the written Word, what it has been written in the New Testament epistles, particularly the Ephesians, Philippians, and Colossians, the mystery doctrine of the church age, and through the church in Ephesians 3, 9-12, it tells to us to make known the manifold wisdom of God to the principalities and the powers and the rulers and the authorities right now, not in the future, right now while you're still alive. When Satan tempted our Lord, in a moment it has shown the only reference which occurs, it is in Luke 4, 5, only once in the Bible. It has shown to my Lord that it will give entire thing in a moment. What, what did our Lord do? Our Lord has given for us that we the believers can know it, can understand it, can realize it. In the heavenlies has been made superior than what Satan could show to our Lord on this earth. It can give to you anything just if it can go down in a moment. But what does the Bible teach for us? Ephesians 3 in comparison to us 
in Ephesians 2, in the heavenly place, he has given greater things for us. And to look that, it will require a day-by-day -day process, a day-by-day -day learning, a day-by-day -day edification complex of the soul. And this day-by-day -day process which has been neglected is really a great failure for us to look what exactly our Lord has designed for us in eternity past. And that is what, dear brethren, you and I have to note. The simple reality of the truth. Many men may come and tell that this is what and this is that will be. But Ephesians 2, 4, 6 through 7 tells to us that he might display in the coming ages the surpassing riches of his grace in kingdom towards us in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The contrast in the moment of time Satan took to show world's glory. But... For us, it will take an eternity to view what the Lord has accomplished for us through his sufferings, death, and resurrection, the vastness of his work of grace. In the coming ages, he will display on us the surpassing riches of his grace. The eternal occupation of the redeemed will be his work accomplished on the cross and will explore in wondering admiration his kindness towards us. It will be a display of the riches of his grace in all of its details and magnitude. Just as the sin of man has been sorrowfully and tragically displayed throughout the, throughout the history of the world, so shall the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ be gracious, gloriously displayed throughout the coming ages when we learn Bible doctrine and manifest the impact of our Lord, the legendary impact of Christ, so that the people can learn the reality of the world. And the people can know what it is to be in Christ. And as long as we fail to give number one priority for Bible doctrine, dear brethren, we are living a life, a life that is absolutely lie. A life wherewith our Lord has prayed for us in John 17. Evil should not possess them. They should be out of the evil, but have given them thy word, and sanctified them thy, through thy word, and thy word is the truth. The greater we are negligent to know this truth, greater our life that is not pleasing to Jehovah. Dear brethren, you need to be very much careful in this unique dispensation of the church age. In the Old Testament time it was endowment, but now we are in enablement. In the Old Testament time, it was uncertain few, but it is now in on everyone. The indwelling ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. In the Old Testament time, it was for only for a momentary second. It would come and it would go. It would perform its act and it would leave it off. But now it is not like that. Constantly, permanently indwelling in us. That's why we have been under the new law, not to grieve, not to squelch, and not to lie. That's why we have been called as Alakenikites, new spiritual spaces unto Christ. We do not have any other reason to claim or tell, Father, I couldn't do this, I couldn't do that. No. We cannot plead ignorance at the judgment seat of Christ because we have been given the maximum which a human mind can think, which a human mind can even imagine. God has done abundantly, exceedingly, above all that we can ask or think through the polytheism of privileges that we are enjoying in a day-by-day -day process. And not many men in Christendom, including the pastor teachers, do know what are the polytheism of privileges. Far less they can inculcate that to their hearers as the care given under them. And why is the great failure, negligence, arrogance and ignorance? That is the only unique great failure for them not to know the truth. The great failure for them is negligence. Not enough men know the reality of the word of true meaning of blessing. And they want to organize big, big crusades. And these are the men who say, we have a blessing meeting come, we have a blessing prosperity come. And when we could ask them what is the real meaning of blessing, they don't even have a face to tell what is the real meaning of blessing. And what is it? They want to cheat the people with those things. 
Jeremiah 8, 6 reminds me of the fact all time. Our Lord will attend our assemblies and he will give and hear for us what we are preaching. And if it is not right, if it is not straight, if it is not absolutely righteous, which is aligning with the word of the Lord, then our Lord gives the conditions of 7, 8, 9, and 10 verses of the same Jeremiah 8. And the people will come to tell in a slight manner, peace, peace for you where there is no peace. That meant to say, for you, you're thinking you can get peace by giving some XYZ trends of methodology of sacrifices. No, but Bible doctrine calls that you need to have a peace, a peace which comes from the word of the Lord alone. Under the pure mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And if it is not been done by the pure mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, for you to know the word of the Lord, then there is no means for you to attain that great peace, great love, great joy. Far less you can think you can attain greater things than this. It's a very pathetic condition in our Christendom today. The way how our Lord was being rejected by the people of Jerusalem. Except if it were not at the home of Bethany with Lazarus, Mary and Martha. To really get down to rest after his teaching, preaching and working out. The whole land was entire of apostasy. They couldn't receive Christ. Today the same to same thing is happening in our Christendom. Though our Lord knocks the door of your heart, as per Je Je Revelation 3.19, a rough passage resembles for you for rebound not to be believing in Christ. That is a passage believing to the believers, telling for you to come back in fellowship and learn the word of the Lord and grow up in the knowledge of Bible doctrine. That is what our Lord comes and knocks the door of your heart to open up. So that you could not be in apostate period as the people of Jerusalem were when our Lord was alive. They were into the trends of greater apostasy. Not able to realize that my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was a true Messiah. In fact, even Nicodemus couldn't understand the teachings of our Lord. Far less those people can really understand. Who was Nicodemus? He was a teacher. He was a man who taught them the law. When he couldn't realize the teachings of Jehovah, comparison with Isaiah 44 and 55, 1. Water representing the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, water representing to his word. He asks, how can I be born again? That is what it is happening today again in the churches. Not only in my country, India, even in any part of the world. No proper exposition of biblical truth. No proper exegesis of Bible doctrine. No proper isagogical study nor categorization of the subject through the dispensing technique of dispensations so that the people can know the reality of the word where they are now. The word became flesh. The flesh in written became the written word for us. And it stands written that it has been written forever. And you and I can learn from that word. And that word alone is our God. The name for the word of the Lord. One more name for our Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ stands in Revelation. His name is the word of God. And what else do we require for us to emphasize much more? For you to know and to understand that his word has been honored above his name. And that word alone, once again, talks to us through the Bible, through the completed canon of Scripture, and tells us for the permanence of the spiritual gifts, the emphasis of that work, and realizing the reality of the word. When the word alone is teaching us so many things, what it is that we are still want to look. Still looking upon the miracles, healings, and tongues. Falsely growing around for the things pertaining to blessing, prosperity, gospels. Blessing, meeting. It is not a blessing meetings, it is a meetings for making money. The minister should work for Bible doctrine if he's really having the bona fide gift of a pastor teacher. The minister, if he doesn't work upon Bible doctrine, then he is gone. Then it is no longer into the reality of the word. And what is the purpose that we be kept alive if it is not for the word of the Lord in this church age? 
Many men will come to show you in a moment, telling that your sorrow will be converted into joy. Just follow my ministry. Donate to my ministry some millions of rupees or dollars. There cannot be any true blessedness in Jehovah until and unless you get it from the knowledge of Bible doctrine, dear brethren. True happiness comes for us in Psalms 49 as well. In comparison, a man to a beast who is without doctrine, but a man with the knowledge of Bible doctrine compared to the true worker of Jehovah. Rather than these things which the word of the Lord tells to us to be done properly in an edified manner through the supernatural means of execution, many people have gone. Have gone in the human viewpoint of thinking. The thinking in the prince of the power of this air. And the prince who has been over here is always a murderer and a liar from the beginning, says John 8.44. And they want to follow their father, the father of lies. If it is not Bible doctrine to possess your soul and to cleanse out your evil thinking, evil thinking being flowed from Mark 7, what we can read, what it comes out from the heart of 21 to 23 and following. If that thinking has not been corrected, if that thinking has not been really given to the praise of his glory, if that thinking has not been absolutely necessary for us to not, then we are living a life into this evil world. Though we have been called as believers in Christ, a life that has been following the pattern of Satan and not God. Dear brethren, you need to change. And we can change only when we are there in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. We can bought into light again to know that and understand the reality of the word only when we are walking towards Bible doctrine with a deer which pants for the water and runs for it. Greater our failure to understand the simple dogmatical truths in our life. Greater will be our lives which are not at all valid in the sight of Jehovah. You are a son all the time when you believe upon Christ. But it is a must, the necessity of the condition to put an end to sin and to live for righteousness in God. And greater our negligence to know the simple truths will cause us to be traitors and liars. The one who are foolish, who have not been ready to fill their lamps with oil. That has a passage pertaining to the millennium rule. But in application of that practical one, we are foolish enough not to entertain ourselves in the word of the Lord. Men are happy to entertain with the things pertaining with X, Y, Z trends. But the believers are not happy to entertain with the only one thing which is necessary, the Bible doctrine. And dear brethren, which way you want to go, you decide. In a moment of time, you want to look upon the entire world's wealth and follow wrong things, fear for the softies, and reject the only truth which the Bible doctrine has been given that is left to you. Or, looking upon the heavenly blessings as per Ephesians 2, 6 through 7, and it demands time for you to look upon the entire doctrine of heavenly blessings in a day-by-day -day process. Do you want to look at it that is also left to you? Without capacity, God doesn't prosper you nor he blesses you. You need to have the capacity and the capacity will not come until and as you take Bible doctrine as number one priority as never before in your life. So which way you want to go, you decide. We shall continue in the next day. Father, we are grateful for the privilege that I was going to fellowship with you through the word. We pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, will enlighten us in these things and make it a source of blessing and challenge. Sovereign Lord, for we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen.